Federal Reserve Vice Chair for Supervision, uh, Michael Barr, said in a speech yesterday that stable coins, like other unregulated private money, could pose financial stability risks. That was a quote. And that, in his words, Congress should work expeditiously uh, to pass much needed legislation to regulate stable coins. Here to discuss uh, Perry Ann Boring, Chamber of Digital Commerce founder uh, and CEO. Anything earth shattering in, in, those, in those comments, uh, Perry Ann? What can we glean from that about future regulation? Yeah, so for one, Vice Chair Barr, in his statement yesterday, he, he said that stablecoins need to come under the Fed's supervision under the premise that they may be systemically important. That is just a vastly overblown assumption. The total value of stablecoins worldwide today is about the size of a mid-sized regional bank. Stablecoins, they're not a financial stability risk. Now, secondly, what he was doing was he was sending a message to Congress urging them to pass a piece of legislation that is currently being worked on by the House Financial Services Committee. Please note, no one's actually seen this bill. The members of the committee hasn't seen the bill. The industry hasn't seen the bill. But somehow, Vice Chair Barr is involved in the negotiations. I think we've got some some uh, kind of a tail wagging the dog situation going on here. The Fed really needs to focus on monetary policy, and they should leave the legislating to Congress. Now, we've always been supportive of having clear rules to the road for digital assets. I'm not saying there's no room for regulation, but this needs to be done in a transparent way. Okay, this, this winter, this, maybe it's not a nuclear winter, but what we're seeing in, in crypto, um, will it resolve itself eventually, in your view? And is it as simple as the Fed's in a tightening mode that makes, uh, that makes uh, crypto less attractive in terms of being, uh, you know, there's a fixed amount, so, you know, that we can print dollars, there's only 21 million Bitcoin. When the Fed gets tight, does that explain why we've seen these 60% loss in value on, on across, almost across the board in crypto? Does that explain it? I mean, crypto is volatile. It's, it's always been volatile. It's a nascent asset. I, I do think it's important that we take a macro view of the overall market across the board on Wall Street. All risk assets uh, from equities to commodities have seen large price swings of volatilities over the past couple of months. I do think there's a lot going on in our economy that's leading to volatility in the crypto markets. And I still think Bitcoin, it, it's a hedge against these macro factors like inflation. This is a largely misunderstood asset. Uh, and just to hone in another point here, for a decade, investors have been forced to navigate investing in cryptocurrencies alone outside the existing financial advisory relationships. A ETF that directly holds Bitcoin would change that. Yet the SEC has continued to unjustifiably block every attempt to bring one to the market. It's truly one of the largest conundrums in the industry and something that we'll be releasing a report on imminently. What would uh, the SEC need to see from other uh, regulators or, or Congress to feel that that was something that, that finally uh, had its time, the ETF? What, 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 what would allow them to feel good about that, do you think, in your view? In my view, I don't know if there's any other information that could be provided to the SEC. We've studied this issue in detail. We spent the whole summer d diving into what happened at the SEC. How come over 16 companies, including some of the most respected institutions, have all been denied the ability to offer a spot Bitcoin ETF? And the, un the SEC has put arbitrary and unique requirements only to Bitcoin on this industry. There's companies that are suing the SEC uh, in, in, uh, under discrimination uh, be, because of this. So I, I think at this point, it, it's less about being able to provide data to the SEC about their concerns. And, and it looks like it's more of a political play. Do you feel just it, it, for, in technical reasons, uh, Perry, and it, it, we've seen pullbacks before that are very similar to this in, in the history of Bitcoin over the past uh, 10, 12 years. 
Do you think that the, the stock market or risk assets or um, when we finally see a, a bottom there, is that when you think Bitcoin will finally bottom? And will it coincide with the Fed finally, uh, you know, having done all of its work in raising rates? Is that, is that how long this could last? And, and what kind of number are you talking about uh, potentially on Bitcoin? Is 10,000 a possibility? I've like always that. been, yeah, I mean, I've always been very long on Bitcoin. I think we're close to the bottom um, at this point. Uh, Bitcoin has traditionally followed uh, cycles to its halving. Uh, the next halving will likely be in mid-2024. Um, usually it's it's 12 to 6 months before the halving that you see another run-up. Uh, it is kind of unique where we've seen a lot more correlation um, for Bitcoin directly to, to the markets over the past couple of months. But historically, it's been non-correlated to uh, to, to the stock market. So uh, these are unchartered territories. I'm long Bitcoin. Uh, this is this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And, and I do believe that one day Bitcoin will be globally recognized as a reserve asset. Okay, Perianne, thank you. Good to see you, Joe. All right, good to see you.